Well, hello there. Happy Friday. Uh, I'm, uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, hey, Navala, how are you doing? Uh, thanks for joining me on this um, Friday evening on uh, Labor Day, is it, I think? So Labor Day weekend. So I hope you have a fun weekend plan. Um, I'm just going to be doing a whole lot of painting. Um, so that's what my weekend's going to be like. But uh, so today I thought I would uh, do a different type of a pour uh, demonstration. I'm going to do a dustpan pour. And uh, it's a fun technique. Um, I like it a lot. I don't do a ton of them. But, uh, but every time I do them, I'm like, I got to do more of those because they're really fun. So I'm going to try um, uh, three different types of things in this painting. Um, I'm going to put three elements together and see what will happen. So um, I'm going to work on a 16 by 20 canvas, uh, which is just a regular canvas tonight. This is just a, a 16 by 20. Hey, JC, thanks for uh, stopping in. And I put my tape on the back and the hooks. Hey, Donna, thanks for uh, stopping by. And uh, so working on just regular canvas, I've already uh, wet the back. I like to kind of spritz the back of my canvases. I have a handy bottle of water right here that I always keep close by. Um, so I have a nice tight canvas to work on. So like spritzing the back and especially in the corners is a great little uh, tip for tightening up those canvases. So, <clears throat> hey Sandra, thanks for uh, dropping by and checking out our uh, demo tonight. Um, this is going to be a dust pan pour. And um, before we get started, I was going to show you, hey, Chris, how are you doing? I'll show you something I was working on last night. I did a couple paintings and uh, just some kind of ring pour, standard ring pours. Um, this is one of the ones I did. This is a, a, a 16 by 18, not that big. 14, 14 by 18 canvas or a, a, one of my cradle panels. So, but this was a kind of a cool one. It's just some purples and uh, it's actually uh, dioxazine purple, uh, brilliant blue, gold and white. So just four colors in this one, but it's kind of a fun, kind of a fun ring pour. I like to stretch out my rings a lot and kind of distort the rings. So, but that's uh, one I did last night. And uh, so, again, we're doing a dustpan pour. Hey, JC, thanks for uh, stopping by. Oh, I forgot my mute, my mic. Oh, my gosh. Um, glad I saw that. Sorry if uh, you couldn't hear me very well. Hey, Donna. So now that I've got my mic on, I'll start again really quick. Um, thanks for stopping in, everybody. And uh, so we're going to do a dustpan pour tonight. Um, it's a fun technique. I'm working on a 16 by 20 canvas, and uh, it's just got my tape and my little hooks on the bottom. Um, and I've got, I'm only gonna be using four colors. I'm gonna keep it like a simple, fairly simple color palette. You can go crazy with, with these dustpan pours and have lots of different colors, but I'm gonna try something a little different. Uh, so I wanted to keep the color palette very simple. So I have white and black, silver and gold. So just four colors. And I'm really going for a very uh, uh, contrasty painting. I want kind of a very light base coat, which I'm going to put on. And then I want uh, two layers of dustpan uh, pores. So I'm going to have my first layer be a bigger pour with darker colors with the, the black, gold, and silver. And then the second pour is going to be a smaller dustpan with uh, lighter colors. So the white, is silver, and gold. So we'll see what happens. I've never done a uh, double dustpan pour. I've done many um, like single pours or multiple dustpans in different sections, but this is the first time I'm kind of doing a bigger one and a smaller one. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know, but uh, it should be fun. So good morning from Australia. Thanks for uh, joining us. So here are my dustpans. I've got a big one here. That will be my like first pour. And then I've got a little one. And that'll be the second one. And uh, I got these at just the dollar store. These are very cheap and inexpensive. 
Um, I've got a couple bigger ones too for like larger canvases, but these work great and they're very, they're very cheap. So the small one, I'll point something out. Um, it's a very shallow dustpan. And uh, if you put too much paint in this, it'll kind of, it could flow down the, the back of the handle. So, and there's a hole there. So if you're not careful, it can dump out your hole and wreck your painting. So you want to put, if you have something like this, that is very shallow and has got this kind of open um, handle, put some tape on the back uh, and cover that hole just so, just in case you don't have any paint running backwards. This one is a much deeper dust pan. So, and you don't have to really worry about that. It's kind of set up differently. So just, you know, um, just experience and um, <laughs> reckon a couple pours that way. But anyway, hey, Karen. From Tasmania, you made it. Thanks for joining us. Karen is, it's Saturday where Karen's at in Australia, Tasmania. So she's looking into the future or we're looking into the future, one of those two. So anyway, uh, I'll get started. And uh, here's my colors. I've got uh, white, black. I don't wanna, there are a lot, there's a lot of paint, uh, gold and silver. I like working with these four colors a lot. I do a lot of paintings with them. Uh, the one behind me, that's these four colors. That one is just a black, white, gold, silver painting. So, um, hey, hello from Wisconsin. Guess what? I was born in Wisconsin. That's very cool. So I will uh, get started. I'm gonna put a base coat down and my goal with the base coat, I'm gonna put some white down and some silver and I'm gonna spread it around with my palette knife. Uh, I wanna have a little more interesting uh, base coat in this painting. So we'll see what happens. I want a little more interest I thought would be kind of cool. So, and also it might be a little easier to see on the camera. So we'll give that a shot. So I'm going to over and get started. So here is the top view. And um, hey there, Karen. Um, so anyway, okay, so what I'm going to do is just pour on some white. Like that. And then I'm going to pour some silver on right over the top. Just like that. And then take my palette knife. Maybe I'll take the big one. It might go a little quicker. And then just spread it around. And this is my standard uh, formula. Uh, this is just this is this is just a five parts flow trawl, uh, three parts paint, and water if I need it, which I normally do in the silver and the gold. Not so much in the white and the black because that's the artist loft uh, flow acrylic. So I just want to get like a very a random abstract kind of interesting uh, base coat here. Instead of a solid color, I think this will be a little more interesting. So there's quite a bit of paint on there. Uh, it might be a little difficult to see, but, um, but hopefully, you know, I, I chose the black in the gold and silver because it'll be a a uh, lot of contrast when I when I put the dustpan pour on. So I'm gonna tilt this just a little bit uh, to, to move the paint around a tiny bit. And and I'll, I'll glance over at the comments um, and the questions kind of as I go through the demo. Um, so you can put them in there and if you, in case you have them and I'll kind of go back and, and look through them. So I'm just, uh, I'm doing this, uh, tilting this just to make it a little more random in a little less, um, uh, to kind of, you know, distort the palette knife marks a little bit. I, I'm not really concerned about tilting off over the edges or anything like that. This is just to kind of move the paint around and just to get a little more interest in my little background. Let's 
So. I like that. Okay, so we've got a kind of interesting base coat on here. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased with that. That adds just, uh, that'll show through in areas because when you do a dustpan pour, at least this one, I'm going to try to have a lot of negative space or at least nice negative shapes uh, showing up through the, the uh, around the other um, fields of paint. So it'd be nice to have some interest in these negative areas. So that's my plan anyway. We'll see if it works. So let me take a quick look at the, uh, any questions? Chris asked if I mix my paint and leave them for 24 hours. I don't really do that, Chris. Uh, I'm kind of impatient as far as it goes with mixing my paint. So I usually try to mix it and then leave it for maybe an hour or so. Um, sometimes I'll just mix it and then immediately paint. Um, but I, I'm not very disciplined um, about mixing it up and leaving it for 24 hours. Um, I'm very patient, but I'm just not that patient. So um, I don't think that's necessary. It's nice. I mean, that's ideal if you can figure out what colors you want to do and have it all planned out. But um, I don't do that. So, okay. Do you thin the base coat, Roxanne asked? No, that is, um, the base paint is the same consistency as all my other colors. So uh, the formula is five parts Floetrol, three parts paint and water if I need it to get the consistency I like, which is a, uh, a slight mound. I want a small mound when I when the paint streams off of the stir stick into the paint. Let's see if I can, maybe I'll hold it up and I can show you. Maybe you can see this Let me give it a shot. Let me grab a stick. It might be, well, the gold is a difficult one. Well, I'll show you in the gold, but maybe, so it's, it's ra relatively fluid. Um, it's gonna be very hard to see though in the camera, but there is a, a slight mound when the paint drizzles off of the stick. It's just, the angle is just not right to show you um, the mound thing. But, uh, so it, this, is a, this is my standard basic formula. This is a much thicker bait, the uh, much thicker paints than like the Dutch pour that we did um, a couple weeks ago. So, but th they're all the same consistency, all the paints. So, all right. So I've got my little base coat on there. I'm going to scooch this forward and get my big old um, dust pan. Now, let me show you, actually, let me scooch this back and show you kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm going to fill this with the dark, with black, gold, and silver. So I have a dark uh, pan full of dark colors, uh, mostly the black. And then I'm going to randomly put this on the canvas and uh, leave some interesting negative shapes. So hopefully it'll be, it will uh, look cool. We'll find out in a little bit here. And for a 16 by 20, uh, if I was doing a ring pour, um, I would use about 10 ounces of paint total. Um, with this, because we're not covering the entire canvas, this is more of a negative space pour. Um, you can look at it that way. I don't think I'm, I'm not going to be using 10 ounces probably. More like for the big dustpan, more like six to eight ounces, I think. I'm just going to... I'm just um, guessing and kind of having an educated guess at how much paint I need. So I'm gonna kind of maybe do three puddles here of, I should, no, that's fine. Three puddles and we'll see what happens. Then I'll put in some silver, maybe some silver over here. And I'm going to try to do a little bit of a high pour. So I'm kind of drizzling the black in from, from high. So we may, might get some uh, mixing of colors as, uh, as it comes out of the dustpan. We'll find out. Yeah. 
and a little more black. So then I'm just going to kind of shake it around a little bit. I could also take like a stick and blend it slightly. That'll add a little bit of interest. I don't know what this is going to look like when we dump it on there. Uh, I think I want some more black though. Oh, that's a lot of black and it all kind of sank. But uh, okay, well, we'll find out. Okay, so I've got an interesting looking dustpan full of paint. So I'm going to hold this and I'm going to pull my, let me get this out of here. Okay. So let me hold this here. I'm going to move some of these paints out of the way. And the way you fill your dustpan, you can fill it many ways. Uh, this is a very random way I just did it. But you could actually do like a ring pour in the dustpan. Um, and that will come out very cool with a bunch of rings. This is just a very random, uh, like, big puddle of paint. So we'll see what happens. Um, but it kind of matches the base coat. It's all kind of swirly. So let me pull this forward a little more. Okay, there it is. We're in camera now. So I have to kind of decide what I want to do. I think I'm going to start down here and move it up and kind of just in a random motion. I don't want to go just straight across. That would be very boring. So I want to have some interesting, an interesting shape. So let's get started and let the paint kind of float over the edge. If you can get it even, that's the best. It's a little difficult. There we go. And I kind of want to move the dustpan back evenly. And we're getting some like bare spots, but that's okay. And So I'm not going to make the all the way to the edge, but that's okay because I think I'm going to tilt. But I'm going to just kind of pull it back, and let some of that paint drip out of there. Okay. So I misjudged, you know, how much was coming out. I hope I was hoping to get all the way to the back. And uh, in fact, let me put. It's going to look strange if I add more, maybe. Let me try to tilt it first. But we got an interesting looking dustpan now. Um, all right. So now I'm going to tilt because I want to just move the paint, stretch it out a little bit. And that'll also create some more interest in the shapes. So I think I'll be able to just tilt back and maybe pull some of this off. We'll see. But I'm not too worried about it right now. So I'm going to pull that back. So I love when you tilt it and you get these, all those little drips look amazing now because the shapes alter and change. I really like that. So I'm going to turn this and maybe tilt back a little. So I'm just, I'm, you know, moving the paint, um, I'm being very kind of subtle and kind of careful with where the paint is going. I kind of want to go over this bottom corner right here. 
cover this corner up, tilt it back. Okay, so I really like what's happening here. I think that's a very cool painting uh, all by its all by itself. I, I really like the interesting shape we got. Uh, I'm gonna wipe my fingers off quickly. I think my favorite part of this entire painting now is this area right here where we had those drips and they, they just turned into this amazing, uh, interesting uh, assemblage of shapes. I just love that. I don't wanna wreck it. Um, I really like everything. I like these kind of uh, pointy shapes. Um, I really like it. And I kind of don't wanna screw it up with another dustpan pour. Um, but uh, let me take a look at, uh, I'll think about it for a minute, but I really love uh, what's happening. It might be very hard to see. I'm sure it's hard to see in the camera, but we've got these amazing subtle uh, blending of uh, the silver and the white in the negative space areas. I, really, I just love that. So I'm happy I did an interesting base coat. So let me just move this up here and then if um, I'll check out the questions, if you have any, let me switch the camera back for a second. Um, so let me uh, scroll back up here. And okay. So I'm just trying to, um, hello everyone that's joining us, by the way. Thank you for uh, stopping by and checking out the, the dust pour demo. Um, hey, Annette, Donna, I'm just checking. Hey, Lisa, thanks for stopping by. Um, uh, thank you, Navala. Navala likes it. Hey, Mama Bear Blue, thanks for joining us. Um, just looking for some questions. A lot of comments. Thank you for the great comments, by the way. Um, so no real questions. Okay. So my dilemma now is, am I going to do what I plan to do or stop right here because I really like what's happening? And I think I'm going to, uh, stop right here, but I'll do another, maybe smaller second dustpan pour, uh, to show you. Cause I just think this is so cool. Uh, I think it would just, anything more would be too much. And I think it would just kind of wreck it. If I, you know, if I went with my smaller pour over the top, although, well, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I think, um, yeah, I think my gut instinct, and this is important, my gut instinct is saying, uh, leave it alone. Uh, because it's so awesome. And I think I'm going to go with my gut instinct. I found it's always good to listen to your gut when it's saying, you know, don't touch it or stop tilting or um, you really like something and you had a plan, but, you know, plans can change. And this is art. And so plans always change usually. Uh, so you don't have to follow through with your predetermined plan if something happens and you uh, really like something. Um, that happens all the time in all different forms of art. So I think I'm gonna let this alone because I just love a lot of the things that are happening in it. So I hope that's okay with you. Um, I'm going to quickly grab another canvas and we'll do another um, smaller Dutch pour and I think, or smaller uh, dustpan pour. I think I'll do the reverse. I think I have enough, well, 
maybe I don't have enough black. I'll I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll do a dark background and then put the light on top. I think that would be pretty cool. So let me, um, I'm going to unplug my mic and just move this out of the way quickly. I'll give you one last look, though, uh, so you can check it out. And I'll post this in the uh, group and on my Facebook page and YouTube uh, so you can check it out when it's dry. But here is, um, there is another look at it. I just really like it. This is my favorite area right here, all of these awesome little shapes. I just love those. So, okay. I'm going to put this over on my drying rack and uh, grab another canvas. I'll be back in just one second. Okay, so here is uh, here's actually the Dutch pour practice we were doing, working on uh, a couple weeks ago. I think I'm just going to pour over this. It's completely dry. Um, it's nice, but it's not, not fantastic. It's not um, perfect. So let's just pour over the top. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit, though. So I'm going to take my, um, my squirt bottle of water and give it a little squirt in the corners. And I give it a little tap. And that'll get nice and tight in just uh, about 30 seconds or so. And OK, I got some Kleenex. I'm going get, to get rid of that. All right, let me zoom in a little bit so you get a little better uh, look at what I'm doing. There we go. OK. So I'm going to start with the base coat again. And I think I have enough black. And I'll use some silver again. And we'll do kind of an interesting uh, base coat. So I'm going to just pour some black on there. And then a little bit of silver. And I got my big knife, and we're just going to spread it around. It'll make some grays and things. And I'm just trying to do random marks here to get create some interest. Okay, do I have any more black? I want a little more black on there. I'm going to put some down here. Okay, I'm going to just, um, I like those drops, those little drippies. Uh, so I'm going to tilt this a little bit and again, get, uh, break up the kind of monotonous and um, contrived look. And just move the paint around and let it kind of do its thing and create some more interest. And I really like working with uh, both colored, um, like uh, base coats that are colored or have colors, and also um, abstract, the abstract base coats, kind of like this, that have multiple colors and multiple things happening in them. So I'm just, I'm not worried about, again, I'm not worried about the edges. I'm just, just want to kind of stretch the paint and kind of make an interesting looking backdrop. Okay, I kind of like, I want to blend this a little more, I feel like. Um, Good. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay, so there we go. I think that's that's pretty interesting. It's kind of a random, random looking background. Um, but I think it'll be cool. All right. So now I'm going to get, I think, I think my big one, and I'll wipe this out. That's a pretty dustpan. It's a shame to wipe it out. But that one is a little big for this size. So I'm going to go back to the small one and use that one. That's, a, I think, a much better size. So let's move this forward a little bit. I'm seeing something I don't like right here. There's a little um, bit of canvas showing. I'm going to just, oops. There we go. I just wanted to get that covered. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing, only uh, backwards. We're going to use the light colors now. I'm going to just wipe some of this off. So I'm going to have my white. And I think I'll do kind of the same same thing because I like uh, kind of how that looked. So here's a kind of puddle of white. I may put a couple, kind of run the gold in there, a couple different spots. Um, this is a little trickier dustpan to work with because it's smaller. There's some silver. And there's some white, maybe a little more silver, and I think we're in good shape. Okay. And again, I grab a new stick here. Whoa, it's wanting to run all over. I'm going to just give it a little, uh, create a little design in there like that. Now, I can turn this and pull my canvas back. Okay. So I'm going to start off of the canvas a little bit. I think I'm going to start at the top this time. Let's see if I can get that paint started. There we go. So I want to run it ooh, right over that corner a bit. Cool. I might try try this. I've got these little drops. Let's see if we, could, we can do some cool things with the little drips again, kind of how we did with the, the black one. I don't know if that's going to work or not. All right. So there we go. So time for some tilting. And the first thing I'll do is just kind of maybe go back. I think these are going to get covered maybe. So these drips aren't doing what the other painting did, at least not yet. So I'm going to try to run some of this up here. OK. And tilting always makes very interesting things happen. It opens up these lines and 
it looks there's adds a whole lot of randomness to the the paintings which I love. It's recovering a lot of the dark base coat, but that's okay. I we still have a couple <clears throat> kind of nice areas. Let's see here. I'm going to cover this corner up, I think. So we turned this into more of a primarily a light colored painting. We started with the dark and then we went with the light. And it looks a lot like a, like a geode pour, which is kind of cool. I might end right there. I think that's kind of an interesting, interesting painting. It might be hard. It's, I'm sure, difficult to see the detail in the camera in the light areas, but there's a lot of very subtle uh, lines in there, like grays. It's with the silver and the gold. Um, I think it's a very cool, very cool look. We got a couple little cells happening over here in in here. Yeah, kind of like a geode painting, actually. So I think I'll call that one good. Um, I like that. I like the first one who did a whole lot better. I think that's amazing. This one is, I like it. I don't, it's not like my favorite one ever, ever, but I think we did a good job with it. So, yeah, we got some interesting shapes, the negative space shapes. They're smaller but they add a lot of contrast kind of throughout the painting. So I'm glad we have those in there. So, oh, there we go. So now it's on the camera. <clears throat> okay. So, all right. So I think, yeah, I'll post both of these uh, when they are dry, which should be, there's a lot of paint on there. So maybe um, sometime tomorrow, hopefully, we'll find out. But uh, I think, so you can see the dry results of them. So, but that's the dust pan pour. Uh, let me flip back quickly here to the other camera. So, but that we didn't really do exactly what I was planning, which was, uh, we got about, you know, two parts of the three parts I was planning. Uh, but I was planning on the abstract base coat then one uh, large dustpan pour, and then a smaller dustpan pour over that one. So we didn't quite do that, but I think um, this might be even better. We did uh, two different pours, and we did a light base coat, and then we did a dark base coat. So it um, gives you an idea of uh, the versatility in, in this type of a pour. I really like this type of pour. You can get some very abstract paintings. Um, I really like them. I've seen them done, done many ways. Um, some people tilt all the way over the entire painting after they've done the dustpan. I've seen it done more like I did it where it's more abstract and you leave uh, negative space areas showing. Um, but there's really no rules. It's any, any way you want to do it. Um, I kind of made a very random puddle in the dustpan where you could make it more symmetrical or you could do a, like a ring pour, a controlled ring pour in there. And then you're basically stretching out a ring pour over your whole canvas, which is very cool looking too. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways to um, do the uh, dust pan pour. So let me check and see if you have any questions. Um, let me scroll back up here. And Oh, okay, I'm just trying to find where I stopped. Excuse me a second. Okay. Donna is glad I'm going to stop. Yes, I, I'm glad I stopped too, Donna. Yes. And, oh, Donna asked if I wait for the, do I wait for the water to dry? Uh, no, 
I don't wait for it at all. When I spritz the back of my canvas, I just go ahead and paint right away. Um, it'll, it'll tighten up the canvas very quickly. And then I just go ahead and paint. So I do it all at the same time. And Navala does not does not like to does not like to see the Dutch poor leave. Um, well, we can't all we can't keep all of them, and uh, some of them must be sacrificed to make better pours. So don't be afraid to pour over your old paintings if they're not spectacular or you just love them. Um, you can always you know create something else. Make sure to take a picture of them though. That's important. So always document all of your paintings. I think that's very important. That way you have a record of what you've done. You can see the progress you've made. So always, always document your, your work. I think that's uh, crucial. And Nabal asked, uh, uh, when I pour over a used canvas, do I do anything special to prepare it? Uh, not at all, unless there is silicone in the paints that I used. In that case, most often I don't reuse those canvases. Um, I don't, you know, I just don't bother with, if it's a bad painting and I was using silicone in that painting, um, I usually don't want to try to reuse the canvas. Uh, I'm just worried that I will not be able to get all of the silicone off. Um, so I just would set that one aside and just, you know, not use it, not reuse it. So. But any other types of paintings I do, um, unless there's something else that's weird that I used in my formula, um, which is not all the time, very rarely what I used, like some weird ingredients, uh, I just pour right over the top. Um, one thing I've seen a lot of people talk about is gessoing over an old canvas. I don't recommend that. Um, at all, because the gesso really is designed to go on um, a, over gesso or a bare canvas. It's really not designed to go over acrylic paint. And so there can be adhesion problems. And I've had, I've tried that, you know, back, you know, when I first started gessoing old paintings, but I found the gesso will not stick to the paint. So it'll just peel right off. So I would re pour over that and it have big, uh, big things peel just right off the canvas because the gesso is not stuck, does not like to stick to the acrylic paint. So I recommend do not gesso over an old painting, just paint right over it. Acrylic paint uh, will stick to acrylic paint. Um, you don't have to worry about that, but, but you don't want to have gesso in, in the middle, in between them. Hope that makes sense. Um... So I'm just checking for any other. Thanks, Naval. I appreciate that. Uh, so I don't see any other. Oop, let me scroll down here. Uh, Karen asked if I used um, silicone in this one. No, no silicone in any of these paints. This was just uh, Floetrol, uh, five parts Floetrol, three parts paint, a little bit of water in the gold and the silver to get them to the same consistency as the uh, white and the black which were the Artist Loft uh, Flow Acrylic, the, um, the big jugs. I'll show you. Oop. One second. So this is the black I used, is the, uh, the big jug of the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic and the, uh, the white. So those are the white and the black. And those are a little bit thinner than the, the tube paints I normally use. So um, I usually don't add water to those paints. Um, just the flow troll. Okay, good question. Uh, anyone else actually bought my first, Donna just bought a dustpan. Um, awesome. <laughs> so get on your du dustpan pours. You can do that over the weekend. Fantastic. Uh, Michelle asked if my paint was a little thicker for this pour. Um, it depends on what you're comparing that to. Uh, this is my basic recipe, which is, uh, I just mentioned five parts flow troll, three parts paint, a little bit of water. I like to have a slight mound when the paint streams off of the stick. 
back into the cup of paint. So it's definitely thicker than like the Dutch pour recipe. Um, that is very thin. This is kind of my regular mixture that I use for flip cups and ring pours, um, swipes, things like that. So it's my basic, my basic formula. So thank you, Mama Bear Blue. She's getting a kick out of the, the video. Um, uh, Karen asked where I get the large uh, paint bottles. Um, these come from um, these come from Michaels. Artist Loft is the Michaels brand of paint. So um, you can find these at Michaels Craft Supply Store. Um, you can get them online too. I think if you buy, I think they have a, I'm not sure, um, but if you buy a bunch of them, like they have a kind of like more of like a wholesale price, you can get a deal if you buy like a larger quantity of these online. You have to buy them online to get that deal. I'm not, I can't remember if they have that bulk pricing available or not for that product, but Michael's is where you want to go for that. Um, uh, Donna's at a football game. Thanks for dropping by and saying hi, Donna. All right. Well, that is it for the questions for right now. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to throw them in there quickly. But um, otherwise, that is the dustpan pour. The only thing left to do, which is the... Um, the part that's not fun is you got to clean out your dustpan. So I would usually just take paper towel or uh, tissues and wipe that out of there. And you can, you know, throw it in your bucket of water after you kind of wipe out the bulk of the paint. You could also put it right back in your cup. Um, this paint is perfectly use, uh, fine to use again. So, and again, if you have your freezer paper down and you tilt it off, you can scoop that up and stick it back in your cup. And uh, uh, yes, Novala says uh, Michael's Pro Shop. That is where to get the uh, the deal on the big uh, quartz of Flow Acrylic. And thank you for that, Novala. And Donna said uh, six packs. You can get them in six packs, which is awesome. So thank you for that, Donna and Novala. And uh, Mama Bear Blue asked if I've ever heard of Nova Color Paints. I sure have. They are fantastic. Uh, I use them um, quite a bit in my um, when I'm doing my own personal paintings, not demos and things like that. They're a professional grade of paint. They're actually just up the street from me in LA, um, so they're fairly close to me. Um, you buy them directly from Nova Color. Um, their color range is kind of limited. They have a lot of colors, but um, they don't have an, as extensive a uh, color range as like golden. For instance, they have like golden has about a billion colors. I think Nova Color has about 50 colors, um, but they're very good paints and they're, they're very affordable because um, they sell direct. The only thing I don't like about Nova Color is the paints come in jars. Um, with thread, you know, threaded jars. I wonder if I have any, I don't have one right, like in arm's reach, but um, I don't like those at all because you unthread the cap and thread it, the paint gets dry on there. And the problem is the dried paint can fall into the, into the liquid paint. So what I do is I take, uh, I take the jars and I have large squirt bottles dedicated to each color and I just dump the whole container into my big squirt bottle uh, and then use them that way and then pour them into my like mixing cup and things like that. But Nova Color is very good paint. Um, it's very highly pigmented. So, and you could probably get away with using less than um, my, like my three parts, like five parts flow trial. You could probably use two parts Nova Color um, because it's so highly pigmented. Um, it's a really good paint. Um, so yeah, you can definitely give it a try. It's best to buy, if you're going to try it out, buy 
uh, a bunch at once. You have to pay for shipping with Nova Color. Um, so if you're going to try it, you know, order maybe five, six, ten colors, smaller colors to give it a try to see if you like it. One of the great things about it is it's a little more fluid than our tube paints, than like uh, it's a more fluid, softer body paint than like the Liquitex Basics or the Amsterdam. It's actually approaching the Artist Law Flow Acrylic consistency, uh, which is nice. You don't have to use as much water with it. So there's a lot, a lot of advantages to Nova Color. Um, I really like that paint. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, I'll be bare blue. That's great. And let's see, any other questions? Um, yeah, Karen asked, um, she needs to find large supplies of paint in Australia. I think, uh, as far as I know, I don't know exactly what's available in Australia, but I know Montmartre makes, sells kind of larger bottles of paint. And I know Montmartre is a very, is a pretty good brand of paint. I think it's comparable to, um, like Liquitex basics or the artist loft paints like the, uh, like the artist loft or, um, uh, what was I going to say? Like the Blick brand of paints. Uh, so I think they're, they're a very good brand of paints. Uh, I know a lot of artists that use Montmartre. So you might want to check those out. Uh, you might know about them already, but I know they sell larger, uh, like quarts of paint. Um, yeah, Facebook um, had a good idea. Just leave the paint in the dustpan, pull it out in a couple days. Um, that would maybe work. It depends on the type of plastic uh, the dustpans are made from. Sometimes the plastic um, uh, is harder to pull the paint out than other plastics. Um, maybe I'll let one dry and see what happens, and I'll let you know. That's a great idea. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. And then uh, JC says the Liquitex, yeah, the Liquitex paints are a little thicker, like the uh, the basics. This is more of a soft body paint. Um, it needs you need to put, you know, I wouldn't say a lot of water, but you do have to use water with most of the colors. Um, if you're using their pro paints, like the professional line, those are heavy body. Those are much thicker. Um, and in my opinion, more difficult to work with the thick, the heavy body paints. Um, but yeah, that's a good point, JC. Um, yes. And Anja said Montmartre is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I don't have it out here, um, in California or the U S it's hard to get it, but, um, yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like it, Anja. Thank you for that. Thank you, Karen, for joining us. Well, I think that's about it. I don't see any other questions. So um, I want to say thanks for joining me. And I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed the dustpan pours. Um, I love this technique. It's really fun. Um, and there's a lot of ways to uh, modify it and change it up. So I uh, hope you try it out. And if you do, post your paintings in the Facebook group. I would love to see them. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic Labor Day weekend if you're in the U.S. And I will catch you uh, soon in another live and in the Facebook group. Uh, take care, everyone. And uh, thanks for joining me. I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.